Welcome everybody today to three o'clock Eastern time, Thursday training. We're working through the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And today, uh, you know what, Leandro, it went to part two. You saw that, right? Mm -hmm. So what I did, because the there's the six ways to make people smile, is every chapter or every chapter is pretty small. Mm -hmm. So I did three ways, right? Yeah. All right. So I might be venturing ahead of people, assuming that everybody read that first one, right? <laughs> <laughs> the third one's pretty easy, though. The third one's, I mean, literally, I think I have three lines of notes. So mm -hmm. let's dive right in. Anybody got any comments, questions, errors, omissions, additions, cares, concerns before we get started? Yes. All right, we are ready to go, ready to go. All right, so this is six ways to make, I did three, so the title of it's three ways, oh, there's Val trying to come in, three ways to make people smile, or to make people like you, excuse me. First, let's review, now I will tell you, I don't like, I don't know if I don't like or if Stacy doesn't like me wearing these glasses, but I forgot to format this thing today. And I can't, oh, I can blow it up, but it's, you know what, then it, it's out of the screen. So I, I may, I may do like the professor, right? I bit like the reading glasses as soon as I look up. I'll... <laughs> All right, let's review. Um, last week we talked about um, having the right bait, right? The analogy was fishing and um, it was, you know, when you're thinking about catching a fish, you know, what process, thought process do you go through? Now I mentioned last week, I'm not really a fisherman, although I like it. I just, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. But I know that when I go with my uh, with my friends that do fish and have the tackle and have the boat, know where to go, they tell me what bait to use. I can bait my own hook, Leandro. Hmm. I see you looking at me. They tell me what to put on the hook because they know what that fish in that location, what they want. So the idea is to identify what people want. It's the old adage, get people what they want to get what we want. Mm -hmm. um, so we went over that last week um, and we know that action springs from desire, every action. It just matters what we desire most, right? Whatever we desire most is gonna lead our activities. Um, so in the, in the big portion of that you know, whole story or the, at least the final portion of that chapter was about arousing an eager want. In other words, uh, identifying what people want and then uh, uh, identifying solutions in a positive and enthusiastic way and, mm -hmm. and arouse that desire, the, the desire that they show you, find ways to arouse it. And simply the easiest way to arouse a desire is to find a way to help people get there and show them that you can help them get there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, last week, just wanted to do a little bit of review. Um, this first chapter in part two um, is really, you know, from a 10,000 foot view, it's just about you know, it starts and ends with just being legitimately interested in people. And, you know, that's, I think that's an easy thing to say, but I, and I know for me, I, I don't know, man, I should, shouldn't go off the cuff all the time, but um, I have a, like, I think I, a person can be thoughtful and, and intuitive and caring. I think when we start thinking of big groups of people, I think that that's when that goes away. So when I say caring about people, what I mean really is caring about multiple persons. Does that make sense, Leandro? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's been in, in different seasons of my life. It's, it's kind of an ebb and flow on how I respond to people. There are, have been times in my life when, you know, maybe I wasn't the happiest. Uh, certainly there have been times when, you know, you know, things are darker than others. And I think it's, it's in those times, even for people who are genuinely kind of naturally just interested in people, I think it's those times that, you know, we can kind of shut that off and be so inwardly focused. And, you know, I, you know, 20 years ago, or I think it was 19 years ago, we were talking about it the other day about uh, antidepressants. And I took antidepressants for about six, maybe eight months, Leandro. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it served a purpose in that time. But I remember that time of my life, I wasn't focused on other people. I was solely focused on me. And while I was taking the antidepressants, it was a try to get better. Mm -hmm. But getting to the point where I had to take the antidepressants, it was just that way too. I mean, I did a lot of reflection as I read through this portion of the book and uh, I, you know, we don't have enough time and this ain't the, the forum, but man, there's such psychological, um, man, just uh, psychological nuggets. I mean, just value in how we think and what we think about. So I can truly tie, now there's other ties too. It's not directly or, or, or solely consequential, to my inward focus, but my life didn't start really changing. Now I had to change me first, right? And the way I changed me was really developing myself both, both physically and I was, you know, I was going to meetings, I was doing all kinds of stuff, but then it really became about, um, you know, 
I, I, you know, even in my job, taking a new pride in everything I did, but more so for the betterment of the employer than trying to make it. And, and I'm, I'm thinking about those few things that I started thinking differently and reflected back on it. And certainly a big component, at least in my own personal story of, you know, darkness back into light is what my focus was on. Was it on others? Was it on positive things for me? Or was it solely focused on, you know, whatever desire I had in the moment? So I don't know. I don't want to go too deep on that, but um, I do like this chapter and it says human failure. Wait, see, man, my formatting, dude. Um, human failure springs from not being interested in people. And I, that was the, the reason I put that in here is because that was the line where I was like, wait a minute, let me, and I already knew some correlations when I thought about it. It really was reflective on a different life that I was leading based on where my focus of thought was. And, and I never was, I've never been a person who every day, all day, I'm thinking about others. I've, I've never you know, going really long periods of time with totally getting it right 100% of the time. But I will say when I am getting it right, my life is better. Um, when I show it, the, the earnest interest in another person, um, even, you know, even in shopping, um, and it's down here later in the, in the training, but I remember the last time and only time I ever went out on a Black Friday was probably 10, 11 years ago. And I remember I would never do that again. I woke up early. I had no idea. I was waking up at 4, 4.30 at that time. And I was like, I'm already up. I'll wake up and just get there by five. I got there at five and man, it, I, like I, I couldn't believe how many people were there. I didn't know that that many people knew that 5 a.m. was an, you know, an okay time to be up. But, oh, yeah. but I remember everybody, the, the energy was just so bad. Uh, and I went to uh, Office Depot because they had some, some computer stuff that I wanted. And I ended up getting through there. And when, at the last minute, um, no, I was in the, in the, in the you know, paying for my stuff. And I'm a guy that reads name tags. I, I just always have, it's kind of a weird thing. I like to find somebody's name and I, and I call it. So I remember the girl's name was Pam. I remember to this day. And man, everybody was just, there was a fight, literally a fight starting a couple of lanes over. It was just this horrible energy. And the lady in front of me was extremely rude and it was embarrassing, but not in the, you know, it was embarrassing to me, but in the scope of where we were, it was absolutely normal. And then she rang me up and I said, thank you, Pam. I appreciate you being here. Uh, so that I can, so that I can be here and purchase this. And I'm not kidding you. She lit uh, it. Like I still remember Pam from, from that day. So it, it didn't, I wasn't looking for a discount. Like it, it just, I really, at that time of my life, for whatever reason, I was in a good place. And I, like I mentioned, we, we see life through the prism of, of what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew, I know at that time I was heavy in development. I was doing a lot of training and it was about this stuff and it was about noticing people and identifying them. You know, I love Tim Tebow and what he does. Uh, and he throws a, you know, like a prom every year for, for kids that and his whole thing is like every kid deserves to have that moment where they're the king or the queen and, and they have that. And I, man, I got chills all over. I believe that. I believe every person, uh, when I'm getting it right, you guys, I'm telling you, I'm no angel by any means, but I do believe that every person deserves to feel important. And we've talked about simple ways in this training, how we can uh, help people to feel important in, in one way is just to let them talk. Right. One, one way is just to kind of what I call put them on stage and then, you know, let them talk and ask questions from not like, oh, how do I get them to say that they need something for what I have? I don't mean that. I mean, asking earnest questions. And he, there's some great stories in here. There's one where he was a, a salesman for Johnson and Johnson and he said something. Hello. You know, said hello to the, the guy at the soda bar. I mean, that's all this thing is. Right. This book. And um, one day the guy went in there and, and the owner said, hey, you know, we think Johnson and Johnson is catering to the larger uh, pharmacies and, and stores and, and ignoring the small, you know, uh, the private pharmacies. And so we're not buying from you anymore. And the guy, it just ate the guy up, uh, Dale, it ate him up and he ended up going back there. And when he did, the owner had a big smile on his face and welcomed him back and he gave him double order that he normally did. And Dale said, well, you know, what changed in the last few hours from when I left before? And he said, well, when you left, the soda guy came up and he told me that of all the salespeople, you were the only one that showed interest in him. And, and you guys can read it. And anyway, that's what got me. And there's a ton of historical example of people like um, Charles Schwab and, and Roosevelt. I mean, these people who have just known for being so thoughtful and making everyone feel important. Um, so I think, you know, as we're trying to identify, really, I mean, we call this sales training, but really it's a, I think it's training to, to get us to identify, you know, how we get to the best version of us, right? And for me, um, you know, being a positive influence in somebody's life, you know, is is something that I like. It like it, it, it releases the endorphins, you know what I mean? It just, it's a feel good. Uh, and, you know, people, th there was a reference in the book about he was in a writing class and the writer said, if you don't like people, if you don't love people, 
then they're not going to like or love your stories. And from just from an author perspective, and I think that that I love that because it it really tells the story that I'm going to be, you know, painting over the next uh, 20 minutes. We're going to cut it short today. My son's got a, a basketball game, but this is short anyway. The, the amount of material in those first three. I mean, if you look at the way I, I mark up my book, I would say this is like this is one of those times where, you know, there's a few pages that aren't marked because there, it's more historical references to the point he's making. Does that make sense? So I might be cutting it short, but it'll be just as rich <laughs> as it ever was. All right. Um, people, I, I learned this years ago, and this is an old saying that I have, and I love it. And that is people like people who like people. It just, it, it, and people do business with people that they like. People engage in meaningful activities with people they like. People choose to, quote unquote, live life together with people they like. And people don't typically like people who don't like people. I've had some people in my life that didn't like people. And to be honest with you, I might have a love for them. Well, I can think of my stepfather. I can't, can't stand the guy. You talk about a miserable puke. But he took care of my mother for 28 years. And for that, I, I do have a love for him um, and, and, you know, a respect for that. But he didn't like people. And he wasn't very likable. I think he's a great example. So I want to ask a question, and, and it could be rhetorical unless somebody wants to raise their hand. But how do you, do you identify yourself in the world? Meaning, if I watched your post, I you know read your blogs, I, I watched how you communicate or listen to you on how you communicate who you are to the world, would I know more of the things that you love and are interested in, or would I know more of the things that you don't like and think are wrong? My suggestion would be, if I don't see a hand coming up, my suggestion would be that you that I have done that years ago, that you analyze how am I projecting myself in the world? In other words, and I just think of social media, of the last 10 posts that I put up, is it going to be things that, that I love and that I'm interested in and that I think are cool and I want to promote, you know, share with people? Or is it going to be in a, a negative opinion about something? Also, contemplate how you communicate yourself to the world and identify if you're associating yourself in the, in that category of stuff you can't control. I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm not saying that you should. I'm saying that the human condition is what it is. And at the end of the day, we're trying to put ourselves on the right side of human condition to glean the best response we can from our fellow humans, right? It's all about relationships. It's all about connecting. So if that matters, if people are interesting enough and, and lovely enough to you, then it would matter how we present ourselves. I mean, so I, don't, I would just take, you know, just take a look at how, how am I communicating who I am? Am I communicating by saying, I disagree with that. I think that guy's this. I think she's that. I can't believe this. He shouldn't have done that. Or is it a this is what my, this is where I want to go. This is where I've been, where I love. This is my, these are my kids who I'm proud of. I mean, you know, if I looked at Stacy's, hers would all be puppies and, and children. I'm not even kidding you. She presents herself by what she loves. You're, you're not going to see, and I, listen, I don't coach her. She, listen, <laughs> the last person I've coached in this world is Stacy. So, but, and do you know that every, and I'm not even kidding you this, I have never met somebody who didn't genuinely really like Stacy? She is just extremely likable. So, for those of you who know her, think about that. One of the things I love about Stacy more than well, one of the many things, one, and I even told her recently, I get I we get up about the same time. I go downstairs and I'm drinking coffee and I read the paper on my iPad, and then I'm sitting in this certain seat. She comes down the stairs and I look over my shoulder and there she is. And every time she comes down, she's like, "Morning, hun." I mean. From a guy who woke up in an alcoholic, horrible, negative home every morning. Well, I would say every morning, most morning there was yelling and arguing. I, man, I, I told Stacy years ago that, you know, having a peaceful home is not by accident, it's by design. And I'm not, you know, so I, in the morning, I want fresh, lively energy, energy, and I want happiness. And I, you know, and even when things are bad, because you don't know. Like if you're happy in the morning, there's an expectation that good is going to happen. If you don't know, and here's my question, it's kind of like Pascal's argument, but on a different plane. If you don't know how it's going to go, isn't it easier to expect the better? Right? I mean, it just, I know it makes simple sense, but it's hard to do it in the moment, but it doesn't make it less true. 
Um, so the same thing is about a, a speaker. Uh, you know, if you don't care, I think one of the reasons that anybody shows up here, I mean, anybody could read this book. I, I hope it is because it really matters to me. The, to the people who show up, right, Leandro? I want to, it, it matters to me. So I think that that helps. And, in the, in, you know, I don't have to worry so much about delivery. And am I saying this right? Am I going the right? It's like, it just, I, I have a message that I, you know, internalize and, and want to give to you. And I think that really helps because if I didn't want, if I didn't like people, if I didn't really have it, or I'm a teacher and a coach at heart. So if I didn't really have that desire to, to help people develop and find a better them, then I don't think it, it would work. I really don't. So, okay, let me take a break. Woo. There is one comment. Yes. By Paul, she says, you can make the decision every day to have a great day. Oh, we're going to get into that. Yeah. Oh, Val, wow. you're going you're gonna to love where we're going. You're going to love where we're going. I can, now I got to get there quicker. Yeah. Um, okay. I have a friend. In fact, let me let me talk about it. I think I mentioned this before. I went to my grandfather and my grandmother's funeral. He was a pastor for 62 years mm -hmm. and she was his wife for all of those 62 years. And when and they both passed at different times, I think it was about four years apart. My grandfather was first, but there was such a theme. They both got uh, had their funeral in different churches. Right. And they were both one of them. Pap, um, my grandfather started the other one he preached. in, so it was cool. But, it, you know, the location was different. The time was different. A lot of things were different, but there was such a similarity. And in both of those funerals, they allowed people to come up, you know, and, and talk about a memory or something like that. Can I tell you that other than the jovial ones that were funny and wonderful, the people who came up who took time and sacrificed time, energy, um, man, you know, emotions for showing up to a funeral and then going up and having the, the not only the courage, most people don't want to speak in front of people, but the gumption. You know, the, the, the draw, the desire to walk up and talk about somebody. And the very thing that they all talked about was I remember one story. It was like our daughter was in the hospital all night and, and uh, James and, and uh, oh, my gosh, I can't even remember. I just called her Momo. Momo and Poppy was what I called them. James and Helen, Reverend Pitts and, and Sister Helen. Uh, they stayed in the hospital all night till, till the doctor came out. It was about four the next morning. They were all stories about time, about sacrificing time. Some of those sacrifices of time and when i think about my grandparents i don't believe they were sacrificing like to them i really think that, that they it really enjoyed that but by spending their time um, in care and in service of another those were the most impactful things those were the stories that were told and i got a couple of friends one uh, beat cancer and i went and visited him in the hospital one day and another one had man had some serious neck surgery and i met him at church so i went got him a little bible and you know for like seven bucks you can have him engraved the name on it. It's just a stamp, right? Mm -hmm. oh, man, that was probably eight years ago. Andy's his name. He still brings it up. Oh, that's my friend. He's from, uh, he's Haitian. So I'm not going to try to do the accent. That would be embarrassing. But he, if we're around somebody, oh, he came and visited me in the hospital. He brought, I still use that Bible. I still have it, Matthew. Just something little like that. And John Maxwell talked about, you know, when you, met, when you meet somebody, take something with you. And the book was so old, it, was, he, he, it said in the book, a cassette. You know, do we have any millennials? I think everybody knows what a cassette is, but it was something like, hey, or, or, or a, a little article. It's like, hey, I was reading this and I, and I thought of you and I thought I thought you might want to read it or, I, you know, I thought you might want to listen to it. And whatever that is. But I love the way he, he said it. He, he said calling, offering a little gift like that, a token, something that represents a thought of you is like wrapping a bow around the gift of the time that we had together. And I thought that was boy, he's such a sweet, charming man. Um, all right. So remember, it's. It's about relationships, right? It's about connecting. It's about finding common ground. And to do that, we have to ask great questions. And for the questions to be great, we have to have an, an earnest curiosity about people and an earnest um, uh, like a, and really like people and really care. And I know that this might fall on Samir, excuse me, um, where they're like, I just, you know, and I don't, I'm, not, I'm not thinking of any one person at all. But, you know, like, hey, I, I really don't like people. Like, I'm on the road. I get angry at people. And and listen, that's another discussion. Um, that's another discussion. I believe that we can find, like, like Gus, my stepfather, I found, and it, what, I didn't have to go looking, but there's something about him that I, I do, I love about him. Because he's a, he's a being, right? He's a human being. And although I may not like interacting with him, there's, there's always something to find about somebody that you can appreciate. Um, I remember my dad told me once, he said, if you want to keep more friends and really identify the great ones, he said, just don't lend your attributes to others. 
and, and draw a line on where their deficiencies begin. And, and the easy analogy is I got a friend, he's awesome. Uh, I love being around him. We play golf together. We have a good time together. But every time I lend him money, he never pays me back. So my dad would say, don't lend him money, right? Enjoy that guy. Identify, meet people where they're at is kind of the, the idea. Find what you enjoy about people and kind of stay there. And that's an easier way because some people, in my opinion, have a lot more that I need to ignore and a lot less that I need to focus on. But that to me is how you identify whom we live life with. Like I have an old saying with, uh, at the house, we call it the nest. Um, when I say I'm, I let somebody into my house, I don't necessarily mean the physical structure. Mm -hmm. I mean, who is who do I actually pull into my life? Mm -hmm. And that's a way to have a lot of acquaintances because honestly, the reason I'm always thinking about numbers is I do want my influence to grow. I do want to have an impact on more people in my life as I, you know, as many as I can in a positive way, which is why I smile and call Pam by Pam. Because to me, you can have a positive impact on somebody. And I've read books where it's like you hear stories about people who are about to commit suicide and somebody smiled at him and said hello. And it just it triggers something. I mean, it's it, there's so much energy that we carry and we have the, the power to control that energy. And and either it's going to be met with resistance, in which case it'll wear you down over time, or it's going to be received, or it's going to be met with resistance for a moment, and then it's going to break open and, and your your energy of happiness, and joy, and light, and it, it's going to come through. Um, so anyway, all right, the next one, number two, we just talked about it. What a great segue. I didn't even know it's not formatted correctly. Like it just happened. Uh, smile. He goes through a whole chapter on the value of smiling. I actually watched uh, the, one of the ladies that founded Keller Williams, I saw her speak, and she talked about the science of the frontal lobe and, and data that we had on all the energy that we put out and receive through our frontal lobe and how we can somewhat, it's like people say you can't alter circumstances. Like, it, you know, um, I, I can't change the wind. And that's true. But we can give our life's path a better tendency. Right. It, it's like the, the story of the officer got pulled over one, you know, one reaction is flipping out, cussing him out. And the other reaction is being humble and, and you know, doing it the way you want to do it. Which of those two reactions is going to elicit a better response and, and affect our lives in a better way? So in most cases, it's obvious. Uh, but anyway, smile. I saw now I mentioned Andy Andrews. You ever heard of Andy Andrews? Yeah. He wrote, he's written several books. Hey, you guys, if he's written, he wrote a book, he's written several, but one of them that I really love is called The Traveler's Gift. Run, don't walk. I mean, he's a man of faith. It doesn't matter with this book. It, it's, not a, it's not about that. It is fantastic. Um, but anyway, I, my, one of my buddies, I talk about him a lot, Bill is a Chick-fil-A operator. And um, Andy, you know, they're big into leadership, huge. And so, they sponsored Andy Andrews to come and do a talk here in Pinellas County at, uh, I think it was like Indian Rocks Church, Leandro. Anyway, we went and watched him. And me and my buddy Bill are best of friends. I, I, I love nobody more than him, um, you know, friend-wise. Just an amazing guy. And Andy Andrews put out a thing. He's like, what I want you to do is all day, all day, I want you to have a smile on your face. All day. Sometimes it's going to be fake. Sometimes it's going to be real. Think about positive things to make it real more than it's not. But all day, walk around with a smile and see how things change. And Bill and I did it. And so we each had, I mean, <laughs> we each had like our own day, but it was on a Wednesday. Actually, it was, uh, we had a, a, what do they call it now? Golly, it's not, it's a, it was an Easter thing, mm -hmm. like at church. On a, and it was at night, it was like Wednesday night. And so we were there to serve, doing hot dogs and everything. And we were walking around with a smile on our face like this all through. And most everybody all day just had this amazing. It really did change the energy. It, it was noticeable. It was marketably noticeable, except when we went to Bill's wife and she goes, <laughs> what the heck's wrong with you guys? <laughs> My wife did the same thing. But I'm telling you, man, smiling, it's the expression on our face is more important than the clothes we wear. We put so much energy and oh, do I, I need to look and I want to present well, man. The, so it's like, does action, do you got, you know, obviously actions speak louder than words, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're talking, what is your, what is the action of your face, right? Have you ever had somebody, I actually did it to a guy. I'm not proud of this. This kid walked by and he was a big talker. Like, you know, if you stopped him, you, you were in for it for a few minutes. And it was in the morning and I was actually had a task to do. And we're walking by in the hall and I go, Hey buddy, what's up? 
And he goes, well, and he starts to tell me. And I go, buddy, I'm sorry. I know I said that, but I really don't care. And I kept going. <laughs> he, <laughs> again, I'm not proud of this. this. was many, many years ago. But it's almost like that. Like, I've done that. Like, hey, how's it going, crummy? Great. You know, it's like, <laughs> has anybody else ever done that? Like, you just got a canned response because you, you're doing it out of a pleasantry, but you really don't care. And I may be the only one that has the stones to admit it, but I know we've all been there. We got, hey, so how are things going? Well, and then you're like, dang it. Why did I, and <laughs> anyway, um, people who smile, now there's a lot of data. If you guys question, I would say question everything I say and be a critical thinker, go verify it, you know, test it. But there's a lot of data you guys can find out there that people who smile tend to be happier, obviously, but more effective. And I read a, a big old study about the, the effectiveness and happiness of the children they raise. So it obvious. I mean, that makes sense, right? If, if you're smiling a lot, that's reflective of an inner peace. And we've talked about that. Like happy is happy is an emotion. Joy is a state of mind. Joy is a state of being. So yes, there are going to be times when, you know, by definition, I'm not happy. I'm not happy when my kids get hurt. You know, I'm not happy when my kids fail, although I appreciate it. I, it still hurts my feelings. It hurts my feelings to take my son's phone, right? I'm not happy with that, but I'm joyful in that he's learning a lesson that, that that actions do have consequences. So when I say, you know, I, I, I want to use those words correctly. So it's to have an inner peace and an inner joy does create in us a smile because no matter what I'm going through, if I'm in the right place, when I am with someone else, my focus is, is, is on them. And that's why they say, you know, if you're hurting and you got a lot of problems, go help other people with their problems. That's an old sound. I mean, like I was told that when I was a kid, it's like, you want to get a, you know, your mind off your crap, go help somebody with their crap. Makes sense. And it works. It really works. I mean, I never really, we sh I started working with a guy, Joe, who worked with me in the financial service business. And he had a, a street ministry where every Sunday morning they, we would go to the homeless in downtown Tampa. We go to this, to this uh, big lot. And I mean, tons of homeless people would show up and I, we would serve them. And then it was every, it was every one in the beginning, it became like every other one. Um, I would, you know, get up and talk and just share five minutes of the word with them. Right. Just, you know, as they're being fed, you know, physically, we were feeding them spiritually too. And then you get, and I'm telling you, when I was doing that, I was broke. I mean, thing, it was like, you wake up every day looking at your, it literally, I woke up every day looking at my bank to make sure it didn't get overdrawn. Um, it was, but when I was there doing that stuff, you, I, you don't think about it, Leandro, when you're serving somebody else, you're just not thinking about that. Uh, I used to do that when I was in the tip top baseball, coach baseball, there was a two really, it was like eight month period when I first started where things were really bad. And I realized when I was on the baseball diamond, man, I wasn't thinking about none of that stuff. When I was serving those boys, I wasn't thinking, and I actually had a girl on my team at one. So when I was serving those kids, uh, I wasn't thinking about anything. So the, I just say that not to, not to, I don't want it to be about me, but the only way I can, you know, validate things is to kind of share um, instances of my life where it's actually worked, where it's, you know, now it's not theory. It's like, Hey, it worked. Um, all right. Anything, Leandro? It also helps with our health. Oh, absolutely. That's absolute. Yeah. You can find a lot, <laughs> tons of data about that and the effectiveness of the mind under a state of calm, peace, joy, uh, it's amazing. Uh, creativity, mm -hmm. uh, everything is, is amped up. Thank you for that, um, whoever. Patrice. Thank you, Patrice. Um, I really like this because I think he articulates something that I know, but I don't think to talk about it very much. And I think a lot of people think that actions follow feelings, right? So, and I think it's easy to think that. Um, and, and, we, and I could debate somebody on it, right? I, 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 that's, an, that's a porous, uh, malleable thought process. But I think what happens more often is they go together, right? Um, by regulating our, so if we smile and we're not happy and, and we find a way, you know, like how do I find joy? Well, really, it, it depends on what you think about. That, that's really what it depends on. And, and, and I'm honest with you, I use it so often because I use it so often. Be good at categorizing things that we cannot control. Now, I'm not talking about, hey, I got a mortgage due at the end of the month, and I don't know if I'm going to make that. That's one thing. So if you just sit, if I were to just sit and think about that, I'm not doing anything, right? I want to think about, I'm going to make that payment. I'm going to work harder than I ever have. I'm going to place my thought process on things that I can control. My, my, sometimes it's minute by minute. Sometimes it's hour by hour. And 
most of the time it's a it's just a daily activity set and that daily activity set can can alter our feelings so i love the way you said it i'll just read it by regulating actions which are more under our direct control we can indirectly re regulate feeling which is not under our direct control so it's you've heard it fake it before you make it mm -hmm. right get think of if you know page 67 i put in here uh, again i love the way he articulates it because i got my mind around the concept leandro i just i can't say it right you know what i mean but he does action seems to fuck okay, out thus the sovereign voluntary path to cheerfulness if our cheerfulness be lost is to sit up cheerfully and act and speak as if cheerfulness were already there everybody in the world is seeking happiness and there's one sure way to find it that is by controlling your thoughts man that's true happiness doesn't depend on outward conditions as i said it depends on inward conditions it isn't what you have oh bubba man i told you there's no landing area this side of, of, of glory there's no you're not gonna oh once i make a hundred grand once i get the job once i move in that house once i get out of here once i get into there it's false and i got a great ted talk if you want to email me i'll email you the it's about 14 minutes and it's fantastic it isn't what you have or who you are or where you are or what you are doing that makes us happy or unhappy it is what we think about it's what we think about if you got problems and you got grandkids think about the grandkids i mean it take dominion of your thought process in a book and there's a book in a bigger book that says capture every thought which goes counter to what we were told when we were a kid right you had a bad dream what'd your mom say forget about it mm -hmm. no don't forget about it don't capture your thoughts and, and if you're having negative self-talk capture those thoughts do not let them roll around in your head scrub them against truth somebody i mean that's why it's so important to get around people who think you're awesome because we're our own worst enemies. We start getting in our own head. Why do you think confidence is such an issue? Baseball, sports, high, high level, anything has more to do with confidence and knowledge, has more to do with confidence than talent. But how do we get confident if we don't feel good about who we are? It's hard. You got to start thinking it, man. I told, man, the, <laughs> I, I want to put it to the test, but I know it's going to fail and then it's going to prove my argument wrong. And that is like, I am a good singer. I am a good singer. I am a good singer. If I really wanted to sing, I would find some level of expect, uh, acceptable tonation, mm -hmm. right? To somebody in the world. I don't see, that's what I don't think. I can't sing, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing exactly, I, I, I can sing. I'm a great singer. So. Hey, Matthew. Yeah. I'm gonna interrupt for just a second. Something that has, <laughs> something that's been really helpful to me uh, uh, is a physical, thing that I do when I get negative thoughts coming at me, I actually push them away and I speak it out loud that I'm rejecting the thought. And that's it. been really helpful. Can I, that is awesome. I'll give you one for me. You have to be a person of faith. I was talking to my buddy Marcus, who, and I talked about Marcus, he's my accountable Christian brother in, in North Carolina. And I was in this joyful place in my life. I mean, everything was good. I didn't have any negative thoughts, but every, every now and again, actually a lot, I would end up in these contentious arguments in my head with my father. And on both sides, you ever done that? Where like you have a, a you know, a, a negative conversation in your head with another party, but you're actually being the party, like you're acting both parts. Yeah. And I told Marcus about it one time. This is a true story. I remember where I was driving. I, I literally was on 275 passing Sly Avenue. I'm exactly where when he said, and again, this is for, for uh, people of faith only. He said, you say, I reject that in the name of Jesus. He said, it pron pronounce the name because obviously the name has power. And I mean, I did it and it worked so much so to where I, you know, God's, he it says in Malachi, we can test him. So I, I probably shouldn't have tested him, but I tested it and I couldn't even remember what the conversation was. I couldn't remember the point of contention. Now it would happen again. And it, like I had to keep doing it, but it eventually went away, but it was more because I think my father and I were getting along better. <laughs> so thank you for that. Any, any, listen, there's all kinds of tips and tricks, you know, um, with remembering people's names, I actually had, I mean, kind of uh, digressing. I was at my son's basketball game two nights ago and met uh, a new, some new parents and their kids on, Rhett is on, the, is on the ball club and Brian and Donna. And Brian and I got along great. And when I asked Brian his name, he says, I'm Brian. I said, what's yours? I said, Matthew. And he said, I'm going to ask your forgiveness now if I have to ask you again tomorrow. And I, we got a giggle out of it. And I said, the funny thing is, Brian, 
there are secrets and ways that we can, you know, remember people's name. And he said something to Donna and he said, I, got, I don't know, Brian, one of the things that I do is say someone's name over and over in conversation. And I go, right now I'm at three. So he sent me a text later and I go, thank you, Brian. It was good to meet you too. And by that time it was, I, I literally put in uh, I, seven times. <laughs> so I will always know Brian's name. Um, so no, I didn't digress. That's the next one. That's the next chapter. Man, I'm all over the place. You're too low, Stryker. All right. Um, as, so there was a little book. One, the first book my dad ever gave me was a little book about this big called As a Man Thinketh. Has anybody ever heard of that? Man changed my life. And the premise of the book is as it, as let's make it more relevant to today. As a person thinketh, so shall they go. You want to change your life. We have to change how we think. When we change how we think, we're, we're shifting that prism, that lens through which we see everything. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the spiritual part of our life, the, the physical part, the, the work part, the family part, all of a sudden are not four things anymore. They're one. And life becomes easier to manage. And peace is more easily found, right? Mm -hmm. I don't say that because I read it in this book. We, I mean, for years we had great meetings of people working through this and, and talking about the challenges and the successes and, and navigating their life in a better direction, right? And navigating their associations to better people. Um, and, and navigating our, you know, our minds to better things, uh, because it's what we think about that directs us. It's a weird analogy, but I remember in sales, I would always have, I had a big group of, of people that worked underneath me and they would come up, like give you an example, it'd be on the 29th of, 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 uh, March. And they'd say, Hey, Matthew, I got a goal of X in April. And I would tell them April's are what you're going to do in April is already going to be done because it's based on your last 30 days of work and how you thought. If you really want to make a claim, set your claim for 30 days from 30 days from now. So you want to, you want to, you want to uh, set a goal for May and you want to work, work in, an, in, a, in a manner that's going to achieve that goal in May, in April, and you need to read in a manner that's going to achieve that goal. And you need to think in a manner that's going to achieve that goal. I, I, I work, you guys know, I financed churches with my dad for years and we have pastors all the time. Brother Pitts, we have circled the property, held hands. We named it and claimed it. That property's ours. And I go, great. How much money you got? None. <laughs> it's like, well, hey, you know, let's put our word or our faith. Let's say, let's, you know, we got to work our butts off to, to, you know, to achieve what Jesus wants for us. And again, I don't mean to make this more, it's just, it's just me guys. I'm, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to, what do they call it? Uh, subliminal messages. It's not very subliminal though. It's pretty in your face. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll try to keep it more middle of the road. Um, so that last one, boy, something's coming in. Stacy. 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 It's somebody with a, it is. Yeah. Yay. And, she, and listen, she peeked around the corner. Huge smile. Don't do it. <laughs> All right. So listen, this is it. The last one. Um, that third chapter is, um, oh, I did want I did have, hold on, hold on. See, I'm not, I'm not formatted, Leandro. You got to fail to succeed. This is a good teacher right here. Anything won't happen again. It's like me touching the stove. It ain't going to happen again. All right. <clears throat> I put a read chapter or read page 68. Well, I got to put my glasses on. Ah, uh, I love these. Okay. So it's, um, uh, they're quotes. One by Shakespeare. There is uh, nothing either good or bad. But thinking makes it so. And then I like Lincoln's. Most folks are about as happy as they make, make up their minds to be. So let's think our way to happiness because in when listen, remember the, the laws, right? The law of attraction. Mm -hmm. We attract who we are. Mm -hmm. If you're smiling, you're gonna attract smilers. If you're happy, you're gonna attract happy people. If you're a hater, <laughs> <laughs> boy, man, I don't like haters. Yeah. And I like this Chinese. Chinese proverb, a man without a smile, smiling face must not open a shop. <laughs> that good? That's true. I remember when I was in the restaurant business, I was managing Rio Bravo in Tampa. And it's a Mexican restaurant. And we opened at 11. And I'm rushing around. I mean, there's a big place. You know, we got a lot to do to get open. And I noticed there's like 12 people sitting in the benches in front of a Mexican restaurant at 1030 in the morning. And I remember thinking, what the hell are you doing at a Mexican restaurant at 1030? You know, we open at 11. We don't have lines to get in. We're not Pat O'Brien's in, in New Orleans. And that was the moment I knew I had to get out of the restaurant business. 
I mean, that, it, I literally at that moment, I was like, I am not in the right. My thought pattern is not conducive to effective management here. Uh, and that's a true story. All right. The last one is, um, I have one more thing to read. And then I'll get to that, to that number three. See you, babe. Oh, I put on. Oh, okay. Yeah. About a smile. Oh, this is so pretty. Have you, did you read this? All right. Indulge me, please. It costs nothing. This is the value of a smile. It says at Christmas, but I think it's anytime. Yeah. It's easier at Christmas. That's like that's like low hanging fruit, right? Time. It's coming up. Yeah, c- come tax time. That's that, that's <laughs> time when people need you. Um, it costs nothing, but create mu- creates much. It enriches those who receive without impoverishing impo- those who give. It happens in a flash, and the memory of it sometimes lasts forever. None are so rich they can get along without it, and none are so poor but are richer for its benefits. It creates happiness in the home, fosters goodwill in a business, and it is the countersign of friends. It is rest to the weary, daylight to the discouraged, sunshine to the sad, and nature's best antidote for trouble. Yes, it cannot be bought, begged, borrowed, or stolen, for it is something that is so earthly good to anybody till it is given away. That is no earthly good, excuse me, to anybody till it's given away. And if in the last minute rush of Christmas, buying some of our salespeople should be too tired to give you a smile, may we ask that you leave one of yours. How nice, instead of a nasty email. Mm, mm, mm. For nobody needs a smile so much as those who have none left to give. Wow, isn't that cool? I ought to frame that, isn't that pretty? Man, I could read that again. All right, so yeah, it's on page 70. Uh, If you have it, uh, you can take a peek at it. If not, no worries, you got it, right? You got it. The last thing is about remembering people's names. Everybody knows that that's kind of a thing for me. For whatever reason, when I was younger, I heard, and it was it's in this book. When the first time I read it, I read that the sweetest sound anyone's ears is the name of, is the sound of their name. Certainly, in reading the human condition and how uh, egocentrical we are and how self focused we are by nature, it makes perfect sense to me. I think it's an advantage. I know that I have an advantage when I use people's names and I smile. I don't get the smile right all the time. Sometimes I am in my head, but I, it's a habit with names, you know, catching the name and then remembering it. I'm not, I may not remember. Well, I do. Janice is at Publix that I saw the other day, but um, so I have met methods that I use. Um, I've heard some pretty crazy methods, like, you know, try to get a selfie with somebody if it, you know, and then you later, you can type in names. It's like, I would never do that. I just say it. And if I don't, if I'm not talking to them, I just say it in my head over and over. But if I'm talking to them, I really try to find a way to use it. And there's other ways you can do it, too. I mean, there's there's really you could package it up where you're really uh, vying into the human condition. Uh, For example, my buddy Bill's son uh, is in Cleveland. He's about to get his own store and they do all kinds of personal development. And one of them was in communication. And he was telling me on the golf course a couple of weeks ago, he said uh, how they taught him about good responses that elicit uh, interest. And, you know, it's in some of the examples were. So if I understand understand you correctly, Brian, you're saying this. So Brian, let me, let me clarify that. Can or Brian, can you clarify that? And not in a, in a non, you know, it can't be insincere. It has to be sincere. You have to be curious and it has to be relevant, but that is those types of questions and that type of curiosity really embeds in someone, you know, I, I put in here somewhere, we're only interested in people that are interested in us. That's me for sure. I'm an energy guy and I'm kind of a counter puncher. So, um, I, I didn't date a ton of girls when I was younger and I, probably because it was like, I didn't, I wasn't really willing to go out on a limb. Like I didn't like anybody. I, I did with Stacy, but I didn't really like him. And I, I didn't know if I liked him or not. Why am I going to go make an idiot of myself? So, but, but if I detected a little bit of, of interest, then man, I'm interested. I, then, then, then it opens up. Does that make sense? So anyway, um, if, if you, if someone says that I just can't be somewhere on time, I don't say it, but in my mind, I know that being on time just isn't that important to you then because it's not an ability issue, right? Same thing with remembering people's names. Um, If someone says, oh, I'm just not good at, you know, remembering people's names, it doesn't, I'm not saying they're a bad person, but honestly, it's not high enough on their priority list. I would say if you want to really have maximum impact with minimal effort, um, smile and use someone's name. Even if you weren't curious, just smile on you someone. I mean, for the benefit of them, right? For the benefit of them. That will be a nice entrance. Oh, yeah. 
And you should, I mean, honestly, how hard is it? I mean, even, and I think that the real cool, fun, um, fun way to test it is if you're conscious, right? If you think about it, when you are having some struggles, if you're like, I'm intentional today about smiling and being a, a positive energy and a positive influence on people today. And, and that's not easy to do, but think of the other. Well, if I'm mean and I'm curt and I'm rude to people, then I'm just sharing and giving my crap and my negative, the stuff that's going on. My, now I'm sharing that. Mm -hmm. So it's not bad enough that it's affecting my life. Now I want to affect everybody's life around me. Mm -hmm. And it, the, the reality is I talk about smiling to the cashier and smiling at the doorman and, you know, walking by and saying hello to the soda bar guy. But, you know, the people that we hurt and we neglect the most uh, is the people that are closest to us. I mean, honestly, I remember James said something to me one day and I was like, I'm going to tell you something, son. Nobody says that to me. I'll knock you on your butt. I wouldn't do that. But I had to project. That, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't. Does, does that make sense? I, I don't know. Anyway, um, so find ways to, to remember people's names. I think I had a note in here. Let's see. Let me. I kind of I kind of petered out here, um, Leandro. Most people don't remember names simply for the reason they don't take the energy and time necessary to concentrate, repeat, and fix names indelibly in their mind. Remember that, a, oh, here it is. Here it is. Remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. Ooh, I was thinking only American. <laughs> you mean in Spanish too? <laughs> All right. Uh, any comments, questions, errors, missions, additions, cares, concerns? I, I feel like I don't know. Anything anything you got, Leandro? Um, no, I can answer it through the chat. Okay, let me see here. All right. We are all good. I will go through the last three next week and then um then we can kind of put the, I think we can kind of put the metal down and I'll do a few chapters. And it's okay that if we're not reading along, I mean, if I'm, if I get ahead of you in notes and that's cool too, but I do want to get through it because I got some new ideas for this Thursday thing that I think will make it a lot more fun. Um, although I love it. I, I embrace my nerdness though. I really do. I, I find it to my nerdness to be a great asset. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, nobody, everybody good. I'm going to go watch my son play basketball. Do something like quadra two activity. You know, I like that quadra two activity. All right. See you guys. Have a great day. Thank you, Leandro. Bye.